Jeff's a little bitter. He says someone stole the Holy's hat up at the Gibson property. I think I know the person. Who was it, Jeff? Well, I don't know. I think I gave this person a lead before. But somebody took out the tree and got the good stuff. Shame on you. You know who you, you are. You know who you are. We know who you are. <laughs> It's Adam Witz. He knows who he is. <laughs> it's oh, all good. No, no. Minerals are, even, it's all fair game. Like I cannot say. even begin to imagine he would do that. We're at Agnew's General Store in Wilberforce here. This is about as the barrack MacArthur's Mills. Yeah, Highlands East. Um, so they're trying to encourage tourism by uh, having... Um, Rock hounds come to the area and they've done a bunch of prospecting and they've established a few sites. One of them being the one we're going today, which is the Schickler property. And here's where you register at the store back here. And they've got a couple of sites you can go to. You can go to Desmont. You can go to um, uh, Schickler where we're going today. Yeah, just speaking to the administrator from the um, municipal office here of uh, Highlands East, um, just talking about the Schickler. They have some big plans of expanding. Uh, on their mineral sites within their, their claim that they've got. Uh, I guess Michael Bainbridge, I think his name is, was the guy who's really kind of overseeing this particular project of theirs. Uh, their largest amount of visitors, they say by far, is rock collectors. So Highlands East is definitely a, an opening destination now for mineral collectors in this area of Ontario. Here's your parking spot for the Schickler Road, 1.4 kilometers along Mumford Road from the 648. So behind me, over there, there's your path leading off, going back to the Schickler Currents. So we're talking about calcite veins. I think the real attraction here is the fact you can find apatite and other minerals that are commonly found in the fluorite veins with, uh, with actual little cubes of fluorite on the apatite and I'd really like to find something like that. Lovely purple fluorite, and also you can find it in bands in amongst the, the actual white calcite. And this whole area was all explored for the fluorite in the 1920s to 1950s, and they were using the fluorite in the uh, smelters because it acts as a flux to, to the, the melting of the metal. Beech trees. Well, I see Jeff has beaten me to the spot. Can't miss this as a mineral collecting site. Quite the trench. Obviously the idea is to find where it's not been dug. Which we're using our trench poker with. I got a spot right there I'm going to work at. I don't think that's a trench that's been dug. So I gave up with my spot up there on the ridge. It seemed to peter out real fast. It just hit solid rock. I'm finding this one a little more successful. I'm finding a lot of lumps of um, just like large amounts of purple blob fluorite. Not really what I'm looking for. A few small appetites. I'm just hoping the fissure widens out beneath here. But that's hoping for a lot. Jeff, on the other hand, is having a little more success than me in a side fissure. So the main fissure follows up there, across the top of the ridge. I believe this tree's probably digging down into it. What have you found, Jeff? What are your star finds so far? Oh, he's found quite a bit. A lot of appetite. A lot more success than myself. Lump fluorite. It's one of the features here is kind of the mix between red and green. Green is very glassy in the uh, appetite. So I mean, we're standing in a big fissure here. The Schickler, Schickler Currents, Schickler Property, whatever you want to call it. Um, let me see, it's, uh, you know, it's good if you're willing to spend all day digging hard and uh, your return will generally be lumps of deep purple colored fluorite. As you can see, um, you know, you can see it in the walls and so forth behind me as well here. You know, you can see what you're going to find, calcite with fluoride in it. You know, a lot of small appetites. Some appetites, if you're lucky, with small fluoride crystals 
on them. I mean, some have had more success. Or, you know, from, from our perspective, you know, just based on yesterday's finds, uh, this is not a high yield property for us. If you're just looking for actual specimens of fluorite, purple fluorite, well, there's plenty of it laying around, right? You obviously just have to pick your spots. A lot of people have done some pretty deep tunneling here, gone in quite a ways underneath. I mean, it's quite curious. You see this big cap and it's basically a trench with, with rock on either side. So this would have been a huge fissure at one time with, with the molten calcite in it. So here's kind of a cool find. It's just, uh, it's in mass in the calcite, but it's like a sort of raspberry colored fluorite. And there's several examples of it that I've found here. And there's some more of it. Um, it's a lot nicer than the, than the deeper colored stuff. That's typical of what you're finding here. This fluorite with calcite. So you'd almost think that that um, fissure there with the fluorite, you've got the stream running by not so far and you would think it would intersect the stream and there'd be some sort of expression of it along the stream bank because it's quite steep. Um, it's possible, like I mean, I don't know if a person really wanted to trace it and have reached the stream here, um, there's a good chance that you might actually begin to be able to burrow inwards if the fissure's long enough, which I suspect it might be. And uh, maybe you'll find a fluorite from this end. I, I would guess that this would be the spot just looking at the indentation, but hey, maybe I'm wrong. A, a zircon, you think? Possible. So uh, here's where we're staying. Bancroft in Suites. We got ourselves a view. Real nice one at that. Kind of nice. There's a little restaurant just up there. You go there for dinner maybe. Not bad. 120 bucks a night. Rooms look real nice. Check this out. Ain't bad. Look at that, eh? Nice. Remember that place we stayed in at Eganville? Oh, yeah, that was a different deal. We find our clothes, our dirty clothes, which were on the floor in garbage bags when we came back from rock hounding. Nice gesture, of course. And in the bathroom, our white towels were replaced by brown. It's because of the mess Jeff made in the bathroom, so. What are you thinking about the Schickler occurrence? You think about it, it's a bit like the um, Bear Lake, sadly Bear Lake being closed. Now, same general vicinity, I guess, you know, generally speaking. But the difference being that this is a single fissure, whereas Bear Lake is tons and tons of fissures. And of course, the minerals are a little bit different here as well. We've got the presence of fluorite, whereas at Bear Lake it's, you know, it's more appetite and tight night and things like that, right? So at Schickler, you've got the combined um, interest and uh, efforts of several decades of rock hounds on a single fissure, whereas in Bear Lake, it's been, it was spread out over quite a significant area. And at Gibson, it's just really started as far as rock hounding goes. So that brings us back to Schickler, which is basically tapped out. It pinches at the one end, but down at the lower end, I notice where the digging has taken place, all of the dirt has been heaped across where the fissure continues. So if you want any success at the Schickler property, you need to recognize you're going to spend a weekend at it. You're going to have to dig with several people at the bottom end of that fissure, like at the far end towards the stream, until you finally expose what has been buried by the initial digging. And at that time, you'll find new um, and likely very impressive mineral specimens. But until then, you're not finding anything in the shape of property that's not been found before.